Hello, and welcome to another edition of Worst to Best Albums. Today I will be covering the American progressive rock band, Echolin. Uh, Echolin, they're one of my favorite bands of all time, and I felt obliged to do this video not only because I wanted to, but because also because um, this band doesn't get nearly enough recognition, or at least the recognition that I think that they deserve, and I think more people ought to listen to, the, uh, to their music. Uh, Echolin, in my opinion, have one of the most consistent discographies of any band I've ever listened to. Uh, their weakest albums are nothing short of incredible, and their greatest albums are borderline genius, or at least exceptionally good. Um, so let us start with what is, in my opinion, their weakest album. When the Sweet Turns to Sour is a collection of outtakes and demos that didn't make the cut on As the World uh, after Echolin uh, disbanded from the Sony debacle. It's a cool album to listen to as it makes you think like, what, what if the band didn't break up after As the World and were still successful? Uh, because there are some interesting moments on these songs such as 100 Diver Diversions uh, that could be uh, even, even better if they were uh, more refined. Uh, they also cover the opening tr uh, the opening track of Genesis's debut album, uh, When the Sour Turns to Sweet, uh, which was meant to be included on a Magna Carta Genesis tribute album. Uh, and it's a very, it's, it's, I actually prefer the cover, their cover of it, over the actual original, the original version of the song, which I think, you know, is, you know, it's off of their debut album, so they were still young, right? But uh, this is about Echo and not Genesis, so let's stray away from the Genesis <laughs> talk, because I already did a Worst to Best video on them. I would check that out uh, if you have the time, of course. Um, Sony didn't like that they did a cover of a Genesis song, so it ended up on this album. And I like the reference to the musical box towards the end as Ray Weston yells, uh, now, now, now. Uh, and uh, the end of the album contains a couple live tracks from Prague Day 1995. It is unbelievable to hear these intricate songs performed flawlessly live to such a small audience. It's pretty incredible. Um, the reason I ranked this so low is that the songs are half-baked, and quite honestly, this isn't really a proper Echolin studio album. Uh, my favorite tracks are, as I mentioned, 100 Diversions and uh, This Time Alone. And I will give this album a 6 out of 10. And Every Blossom is an acoustic album from the band. Uh, perhaps the most jovial release from Echo Lynn. It works really well as an EP. Uh, the music is quite simple, which is different for Echo Lynn. Um, and this is a perfect album to play sort of in the background as you're working, or, or uh, music that, um, you know, isn't doesn't require too much like of your focus, right? It can just kind of be in the background and it doesn't really bother anyone, right? In that sense, it's a great album, but I don't listen to this if I want to immerse myself in like an outer body musical experience, which nearly every other Echolin album manages to achieve. Uh, my favorite tracks are the last two being Lunch in the Sun and Blue and, Sa Blue and Sand, uh, which I think are just, I mean, it's hard to pick favorites because they're all very similar. And uh, actually, a child uh, uh, introduces the first track and the last track, I believe. Um, and it just, it's a very innocent, naive, well, naive isn't the right word, but naive in a good way. It's a, it's, a, it's, a really, it's a really fun and enjoyable album. And in that sense, I think it's really, uh, really good. As a rating, I will give this album, or EP, I should say, a 7 out of 10. Okay, some people might um, think this is blasphemous of me to, to rank it so low, but I'm gonna rank May uh, in, what is it, um, the eighth, eighth place, um, or eighth spot. Uh, this is easily Echo Lynn's most ambitious record. Uh, May is one 50 minute long piece that features a chamber orchestra and it's not an easy listen, and it took me a while to fully understand it, and if I'm gonna be completely honest, I still can't say that I fully understand it. I mean, even now, after listening, having listened to it for countless times, um, 
it is a it is a challenge <laughs> to say the least to to get through this album i mean and unfortunately for that reason it kind of sticks out like a sore thumb in their catalog i think as i kind of prefer the band's more um for lack of a better word traditional albums that came before and after this uh the music doesn't really go anywhere and i know some people are going to freak out when i say that i just don't really it just kind of wanders you know it, it does very much wander um i can't say that there are any moments in particular that stand out to me as like oh that's amazing that is incredible it just you know it's it's a vibe it's but it, you know then again if i want to go to an echo lynn album this isn't typically one that i return to too often um and I can't say that there's a lot of interesting moments. Um, I can't help but feel tired by the end of the piece um, rather than feeling uh, rewarded. Um, and nevertheless, nevertheless, though, as I said, the vibe of the album is very interesting. Uh, I just have to be in a specific mood to fully enjoy it. Uh, so it's for that reason that I will give this album a 7 out of 10. <laughs> Okay, the elusive debut album by Echolin shows the band at their most naive. And I say elusive because um, it, I think it's been sold out, um, or uh, they haven't really made uh, many copies of this album on CD. So the only way I've been able to listen to it was through their... Um, uh, this is also true for In Every Blossom and uh, When the Sweet Turns to Sour. Um, I've only been able to listen to those albums through their sort of odds and sods collection um, compilation album called um, A Little Nonsense Now and Then, um, in reference to the song on an album that I will talk about uh, a little bit later. <laughs> um, but uh, we, And it's a really cool album because, uh, um, then again, it, it shows a lot of um, of the deeper cuts from Echo Lynn. And uh, as I said, this is Echo Lynn at their most naive. I hear influences of Marillion on this album. Uh, many of these songs were reworkings of songs written during the Narcissus days, uh, which is the first incarnation of Echo Lynn when they were just really a cover band in the 80s. Um, and there's an undeniable charm to this album that that I, I can't really resist. I mean, it's just really enjoyable. I think for the most part, yeah, I mean, they've, they've gone on to do better things, but I think this album is, is unique in its own way and enjoyable in its own way. Um, and uh, you can hear indications, though, of where the band would go in the future. And my favorite tracks are Shades and Meaning and the Moment. And I will give this album an 8 out of 10. Okay, so from here on out, I think all the albums that I'm going to be talking about, as I said, from here on out, are very, very special albums for me. Albums that I return to all the time. I, I, I'm in love with these albums. I mean, they, these are just... For me, progressive rock doesn't get much better than this. <laughs> so, and, and I'm talking about quite a few albums, right? So uh, I don't want to oversell it, but... I'm in love with these albums. So the first album that I'm going to be talking about in sort of the top half of this list is The End is Beautiful. And uh, then again, this came out shortly after the release of May. And um, I know, um, well, I said before, May isn't really a traditional kind of Echo Lynn album. This is very much more of a, for lack of a better word, traditional kind of Echo Lynn album. And I, I kind of like it, the direction that they went in after this. Um, that's not to say that they don't push themselves on this record into sort of uncharted musical territory. They most certainly do. Uh, the music punches you in the face right from the start with the rocker Georgia Pine, which ugh, I love it. Uh, Make Me Sway is like one of the heaviest songs that Colin has done. I mean, Ray Weston's growls on that song are just so cool. Um, so Ready is like funk. You know, it's it's so it's so interesting. This album has so much to offer, and I love it. Um, and my favorite tracks, though, are actually uh, the ten-minute ballad, "A Lovesick Morning," which is just gorgeous. I love that song. Uh, the end is beautiful, um, and "Misery Not Memory." Uh, and I will give this album a ten out of ten.
So I heard you listening. At, at the time I'm recording this video, this is the most recent album from the band. So I'm kind of dating my video, unfortunately. But uh, um, I heard you listening is uh, Eklund's most recent album. And uh, I'm so excited uh, for the album that, they, uh, that Eklund are releasing next year, actually. Um, which I believe I heard, I heard uh, from Chris Busby and some other people that uh, um, it contains a 29-minute long song, uh, which is I think they've I think they've uh, temporarily called it like Mini May or something, which is super cool. I love it. Or like Sweet for the Everman Two or something. Um, I'm so excited for it, and it doesn't even matter that there's a long song. Like any uh, new Echolin is so great. I mean, Echolin are, are just a band. As I said right from the beginning of this video, they have a, such a consistent discography, and I'm so excited for what they have to offer um, in the future, right? But uh, I would argue that I Heard You Listening is the band's darkest album, uh, not only lyrically, but also musically. Um, the mood and the atmosphere is unlike any album that they've released prior. I mean, yeah, it's kind of similar maybe to its predecessor, which I'll talk about later, uh, but it's so unique and uh yeah there are certain songs that are definitely more again I, I hate to use the word over and over again but traditional sounding echolin uh those tracks would be like war jazz and different days very echolin like uh, typical echolin i don't want to say typical in a bad way they're great tracks amazing tunes my favorite tracks are um probably the more like subdued tracks so uh carried home is amazing and sound of bees i i really like as well um, so I will give this album a 10 out of 10. Suffocating the Bloom uh, is the first album that I listened to from Echo Lynn, and I fell in love with them the moment I heard that, uh, um, that drum fill uh, in 21. This album has a youthful energy to it, similar to the debut, except that the band are definitely more mature on this album. Uh, Suffocating the Bloom is a, a dense album that was hard for me to fully digest or grasp on the first couple listens, but I kept returning to it. There was just that element to the music that I, I had never heard music quite like this before. Um, and I mean, yeah, there's, there's elements of like, you can hear maybe a, a, like a gentle giant quality on certain songs, especially on uh, In Every Garden. And I always never, I never really understood the gentle giant comparisons, with the exception of obviously that track. Um, because then again, Echo Lynn just have, for me, they, they're definitely progressive, but they have their own sound, I think, 100%. And um, yeah, I, I, I think um, the musicianship is, of course, top notch in every way. Everyone is firing so well on this album on all cylinders, right? Uh, my favorite tracks are Sweet for the Everman, which is uh, 28 plus minutes long. It's so good. I love it. Um, and Memoirs from Between, which is a, a much shorter track, <laughs> but uh, it's a gorgeous track nevertheless. Um, I will give this album a 10 out of 10. I'm raising my voice to shout a little louder to answer your questions and ease your tension in my as the World is the album that followed Suffocating the Bloom, and in my opinion, is even more refined than its predecessor. At this point, the band uh, was signed to Sony Records, and uh, we all, you know, if you don't know the story, uh, basically they were signed to Sony, um, which was kind of an odd thing to begin with, but it just kind of, it was, it eventually led to the, uh, to the downfall, uh, I shouldn't say downfall, but it led to the band breaking up, essentially uh, going on, well, hiatus, but when they eventually stopped, the fans nor them, nor did the band know that that would uh, not be the end of the band, basically. Uh, that's a weird way of putting it, but like, they would go on to create more music in the 2000s, um, 21st century, right? But, uh, you know, when they broke up after this album, shortly after this album, nobody knew that Echolin would continue they didn't know that they would go on to make music and, and uh reunite right but um an orchestra plays on the tracks always the same entry 11 1993 and never the same and it just augments the symphonic element of the music uh, this album closed a chapter of the band's history but 
unfortunately, as I said, it, it was not the end for them. Um, my favorite tracks are Never the Same and The Letters Suite, which um, it might not show on the CD or uh, on, on streaming services, but The Letters Suite is essentially um, it's comprised of five tracks, prose, Oh my gosh, I'm testing my knowledge here. Prose, um, ah, I'm forgetting the song. It starts with prose and it ends with uh, one for the show. And then everything in between is, is also a part of that. So uh, I am I guess I could have done more research, I suppose. But, uh, um, you know, I think most people, most people could find it one way or another through looking it up. But uh, yeah, I will give this album, of course, a 10 out of 10. After Echolin disbanded from the Sony debacle, uh, many people, including the band themselves, as I mentioned before, thought that the band would, that would be the end of Echolin. Uh, fortunately, it was not, and the band reunited and released uh, Cowboy Poems Free during the turn of the century. I have a very special connection with this album, as I feel that this is one of the most unique albums in the band's discography. Uh, they haven't released another album quite like it. Um, there's no question that it still sounds like the Echo Lynn we know and love, but the overall vibe is so different. Um, conceptually, this album delves into 20th century American stories, uh, but they're told in a very dark manner, at least lyrically. The music doesn't always reflect the grim lyrics, and I love the juxtaposition of the two. There are short poem interludes. I don't know why I did it in parentheses. That's what they're called. Uh, poem number one, number three, number two, number three, and number four. Um, there are these various interludes that are interspersed throughout the album that reminds me kind of what of what Marillion did on their 2004 album, Marbles, but this was funnily released before that. Um, before this album. Uh, and my favorite tracks are Highest Pride, 1729 Broadway, Brittany, and the absolutely gorgeous Too Late for Everything. Uh, I will give this album a 10 out of 10. Now, if you're keeping track, you know what the uh, what my number one is, um, and that would be the band's second self-titled album. Now, they released two self-titled albums. It's kind of confusing. Um, some people might call this album Window Pain because that's what the album, album cover shows. Um, and for the longest time, I think, you know, I was very confused why they did a second self-titled album, but I think I understand why that is for me. Um, and maybe I'm kind of, you know, maybe it's because I love this album so much, but I, for me, this is the essence of what Echo Lynn is all about in one perfect album. Uh, every track is beautifully written and recorded, uh, similar to I Heard You Listening, and other albums, right? Uh, this album goes down some dark musical and lyrical avenues. Um, I wish I could say every track is my favorite because they're all great, uh, but if I had to choose, my absolute favorites are Island, the opening track, uh, Locust to Bethlehem, Some Memorial, and my personal favorite Echo Lynn track of all time, Speaking in Lamp Black. I will give this album um, an 11 out of 10. I'm bending the rules a bit, but it's that good. It's it's amazing. I would check it out if you haven't. Um, and, you know, if you haven't heard this band at all, I mean, uh, you know, uh, definitely um, give them a shot, especially if you like bands like, uh, you know, I, I don't like comparing this band to other bands, but, you know, if you like other sort of bands from this, from when they started, so like the 90s, right? Uh, the Flower King, Spock's Beard, um, those kind of bands, um, I would definitely check these guys out. I would, I would honestly check them out if you're a lover of music in general. I've, I've recommended this band to people that don't like prog, and they've really liked a lot of what they've, they've heard from Echo Lynn. So I, I, hopefully this video can kind of do the same. Like, even if you, you know, I, I'm sure most of the people watching this video like prog, but um, I think there's something to be enjoyed about Echo Lynn's music from just everyone, regardless of the genre that you like. Um, some people might argue, right, and I'm biased by saying that because I'm utterly obsessed with this band and Prague in general, right, but um, they're just, they go beyond what Prague is, in my opinion. I just think 
Um, the songwriting is so great. The performances, obviously, the, the musicianship is incredible. Um, and uh, yeah, also, uh, just to mention, this will not be the last video that I uh, re uh, upload <laughs> um, talking about Echolin. Uh, in fact, I might be interviewing them next year. So, uh, you know, I, I'm trying to keep it down low, but I just, I'm so excited for it because, you know, as I mentioned, and as you guys can tell, just based on the way I'm talking about them, they're one of my favorite bands of all time. So I'm so excited, so excited for that. It's kind of almost, it's surreal, right? It's, it's, uh, it's like a dream come true. It's like talking to your, it's talking to my idols. It's talking to my absolute, you know, most biggest inspirations, right? So, uh, it's huge for me and I'm so excited. And I, 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 I tried to tell myself, don't say it during this video, but I just couldn't help it. I mean, it's like, oh, they're so amazing. Um, but anyway, yeah, uh, that is my ranking of Echolin's discography. Sorry for talking a lot. Um, definitely let me know of your ranking in the comments below. And keep on rocking. Peace.